good night, each and every one. I greet you in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am thankful and grateful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. So tonight is our fifth night of prayer and fast. And uh, it's a blessing to be alive among the living. So I'm going to start. My topic here tonight is obedience to God's word. First scripture is from 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. As we see here in the scriptures and in this account that talks about Saul was a man that was chosen by God to be first king of Israel. But Saul chose to disobey God's word he only obeyed peace of what God had told him to do. Saul was more interesting in his own honor than obeying the word of God. He keeps some of the animals for himself. So here you see this has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as obeying the voice of the Lord. And when God saw his disobedience, he got, he got moved out of his high position. So in the scripture, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Obey the word of God is better than offering him sacrifice. And he listen to the voice of God. So we see here that it's better to to listen to God's word, to be obedient to God's word than sacrifice. So we won't have to go sacrifice on anything. We could just be obeying the word of God. So we plainly see in this lesson what's going on in this account here. Important. So important than offering fat of rams, the moral of the scripture is you have to be obedient to God's word. Don't make sacrifices with the things of God. We have to follow what God's word said. We can't twist it and do as we want. God want, won't accept that. Being obedient to God's word is important in life. We ought to be obedient to God's word if we want God to truly bless us and answer our prayers. Obedience comes with a lot of sacrifices. There will be so much that we have to sacrifice to follow God's words. We will have to make choices as we go through life on a daily basis. Some true meanings of obedience is hearing God's word, listening God's word, act accordingly, submit, surrender, trust, faith, love, kindness, fellowship, integrity, instruction, faithful. The reason why I use all these things is because Without all of these things, we can't come together to be obedient. There is so much things in this world and so much that we could always gain. Being obedient to God's word will take you in a higher level with Christ. So being obedient to God's word and following God's word, God will take us to a higher level place a higher position he will lift up us we just have to try and be obedient to his word we see that the account with Saul what had happened 
So now here is some perfect example of obedience of people of the Bible. Abraham, God told him to sacrifice his only son, his only son Isaac. And he listened. He didn't think twice. And God opened a way and sent his angel to stop him. So we see here that being obedient to God's word, we sometimes may feel being obedient to God's word is very hard for us to do. We will think twice about listening to God and obeying God's word. But no matter what it is, we have to obey God's word because God always opens a door. When God tells us to do something, we don't have to fear. We just have to go forth and do it. I have a next example. So God said to Noah, he is going to send a flood to build an ark. It was going to rain and everyone was laughing because there was no sign of rain. But in, in spite of what Noah said, obedience. Noah listened to God and he was obedient because everyone wasn't seeing no rain. Even Noah wasn't seeing no rain. No, Noah didn't bound to go and build the ark because there was no sign of rain. But in this year, Noah, Noah kept obedient to God's word. And when he was obedient to God's word, he do what God said and then the rain came. And then his family was saved. So you see what happened here? Noah, be obedient to God and his family was saved. When you be obedient to God, God always puts things in your favor. It have an, I have an other example. Job. They took everything that Job had. Right? And Job still be obedient to God because his wife tell Job, curse God. But he did not do it because he listened to God and he was obedient to God. And then what happened? God gave him back many more what he lost, right? So we see here that being obedient to God, it helps us to be better persons. It helps us to grow stronger in God. It helps us to grow in our growth, in our spiritual growth, right? So being obedient to God is one of the main and important thing in our life, in our Christian life that we have to follow. Sometimes we think that's not important, but it's very, very important. Because God also say in Ephesians 6.1, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. God even told the children to obey God, right? We are God's children. We is God's children. So we all together have to obey God, right? This is what God requires from us, right? So God commands to listen to them, to their parents, to even children. God wants them to be obedient. And I have this next scripture talks about obeying. Exodus 19, 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So in this scripture here, so God is saying, if we will only obey him and keep his covenant, then we will be favored by him or we will be treasured by God himself above all people because all the earth is his. He owns everything. He has all powers. He will allow favor upon our lives. Being obedient to God's word is putting our life in right standing with the Lord. He will be blessing us. will come with our Lord. He will direct our paths, you know. 
blessings will come our way in all direction. He will open doors like never before. We just have to trust God's word. We have to be obedient to God's word. And when I say being obedient to God's word, there is so many categories and there is so much. If I go to, to continue about it, I wouldn't done here tonight because from the beginning of the Bible to the ending of the Bible always talks about obedience to God's word. Right? So when we be obedient to God's word, there is so much in store for us. Right? God bless us in all different ways and fashions. Right? Plus, he provides for us. Plus, it takes us to generations. We may die and go, but when we be obedient to God's word here, our children, our grandchildren, it keep going down because he will be keep blessing them. Even though they might not be as obedient to God's word, but sometimes because we being obedient now, right? And trusting in God and believing in God, it will bring that favor in, upon our life. You know, so talking about obedience to God's word here tonight, there is so, so much that, so much more to this lesson. You know, all these things that are happening here in this world right now. Plenty of people in this world now is not being obedient to God. But according to the word of God, we know in the Bible, in the last days, talks about all these things will happen, right? So God's setting the time here. We, we stay just setting here for the last days, for the rapture. We as Christians, we know. And there is much more that will take place. All we need to do is to keep living our right life. We have to keep going on and living our life for God, trying to be obedient in every way, in everything we do. We have to try to be obedient. It is hard sometimes to be obedient and follow God's word, right? Because there's so much sacrifice we feel we have to make. We have to get up, oh God, we have to go to church. We would say, you know, we have, you know, I have this thing to do here. I can't go to church today. I feel sick. I can't read the Bible, you know. But we have to make our sacrifices, and we have to do what God wants us to do. We have to learn to be obedient to God with, and not to be obedient halfway. Not to do half what God wants us to do, but we have to be obedient all the way, the whole way. The whole package that come together with everything. You know, this is what we have to practice. And being obedient is so much that I learn while I do this lesson. It's love, it's peace, it's unity. You have to have faith because if you don't be obedient to God, right? And you're not following God with you, you won't have none of these things in you. So this is part of being obedient. You know, when you follow trying to be obedient to God's word, all these things will fall in place for us as Christians. Then when God sees us making an effort to be obedient and follow his word, he will, he will help us. He will take us higher. He will show us. We will see our mistakes. We will see where we are going wrong. You know? So this is, this is all this is about obedience. When, and then when you don't be obedient to the Lord, right? Then you see what happens in the lesson. We, we lose out. We lose out on being with God. We lose out everything that we have. We even lose out our blessing in a big way because we don't know what the Lord has in store for us. God knows. God made us, right? God sees us through our hearts. He sees our mind. So even though... We don't feel anybody seeing sometimes when we be in disobedience. God seeing what we're doing. God know everything what we're doing. He know if we're lining up we lies. He know if we're trying. He know if we're just pretending. God know our hearts, right? So this is very important. This topic is a very important topic in our Christian life, right? Being obedient to God will. Because sometimes we, we don't even know sometimes when we if we're not being obedient to God's words because we feel what we feel. 
sometimes we feel we're doing the correct thing and it's not the correct thing so we as Christians have to pray and ask the Lord to direct our paths, direct us and show us where we're going wrong so we could see where we're going wrong and we could pull up on ourselves we could buck up on our behavior and you know we could help ourselves and others to be obedient to the Lord and by walking in obedience to the Lord and following God's word, each day we will see progress. God wants us to be obedient to him, to surrender all to him. He wants us to call upon him. He don't want us to serve him in our own convenience. He don't want us to put him as a second choice. We're supposed to do our duty what the Lord wants us to do. The Lord wants us to do. He wants us to follow him, to be obedient to him, to tell others about Jesus. And sometimes when we don't practice our obedience to God's word, we how we could go out there and tell someone about Jesus. They wouldn't want to hear. Right? They would say, why? Why are we saying that? We need to pull up on ourselves. So we as Christians, and maybe not even Christians, when it, we have to try and ask God for his mercy upon our lives. We have to ask God to help us to be obedient, you know, to keep being obedient. Constantly we have to ask the Lord for these favors and blessings upon our lives. And if we try, God will help us, you know. He will help us all the way along, long as we keep trying, long as we keep, you know, going forward. Sometimes we may fall as Christians, but you know what is the great thing? The God we serve, he is forgive us, and he will bring us and pick up us, us again like never before, you know? So this is, this, is, this is here what I'm speaking about obedience in this lesson. So we ought to be obedient to God's word and follow the commandments of God. Some of you that you in, I don't know if you ever heard about the commandments of God, but there are ten commandments. And by following the ten commandments are some of the ways of being obedient to God's word. So it have one, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses. Thou shalt not covet. So these are some things, right? Sometimes if we don't know what God requires of us. You could go in the Bible and look and you would see where God talks about the commandments. By following the Ten Commandments will help us in our daily lives to be obedient to God's word. Because God's word here, God wants us to be obedient to his word. In order for we, ha we to go in heaven, we ought to be obedient to God's word. We can't want to go in heaven and don't be obedient to God's word, right? Because it it won't happen. We won't make it there. Right? Being obedient in God's word will help us to do all those things through Jesus. Then, later on in life, we will see where God placed us. Right? For example, when I start being trying to be obedient to God's word, right? God started to work in mysterious ways in my life from one to the next. And I, I so was, you know, so amazed. But I know what my God could do. I know what he is capable of, you know. So this is what I'm telling you, my friends, here tonight. Trust in God and, and be obedient to God's word in, in every way, Right? Sometimes you, you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show me and help me to be obedient. Lord, show me where I'm going wrong. Help me to put my life in order with you. Help me to do the things you want me to do and not the things that 
I want to do my own self. Direct my path, Lord. You know? And God will show you. God will show you how to be obedient. How to walk in obedience to his word. He will help you. You just have to keep praying and asking the Lord. And he knows your heart. And when he knows you want to be obedient to God's word, he will help you and he will show you. And, and in, in just so fast like that, you will be changed. Things you was to do, you won't want to do it anymore. Because you know why? Because he will change you. You just have to make the start and walk in, in obedience with the Lord. Following God's words. What God requires of us. And God requires us to, to follow him, to pray, to worship him, to glorify him, to read the Bible, and to save souls for his kingdom. This is what God brings us on this earth for we to do here tonight. We always need to be trusting. And, you know, tell someone about Jesus. Tell someone. Right? So all these things are walking in obedience with the Lord because this is what the Lord requires of us and if this is what the lord asks of us then we are trying to be obedient to god's will you know loving one another you know talking to each other talking the things of god talking to them about having unity peace you know in this time right now that we're living in is some hard times right sometimes some people lose patience you know they feel like I don't have a God. They feel like, watch all these things were happening. I don't have patience. I don't have faith. But this is where your faith will come in with your obedience here. And you will trust God. And he will take you throughout your journey. No matter what the circumstances may be. But hold on to Jesus and be obedient to God's word. Right? Obedient is so important important in our Christian life because being obedient is a step forward always for us, you know, to be better person, you know, all these kind of things. So this is what the Lord wants of us. This is what the Lord requires of us, right, to walk in obedience with his word, right? Jesus also wants us to live for him, to fully surrender all to him and when we walk in obedience with God's word he will show us he will he will treasure us he will put favor upon our life you hear what the scripture say he will sh he will favor us amongst people you know so this is what we have to do this is what we have to try and do we have to try and live a life in obedience to God's word. Trusting in him. Being obedient. Listening to him. You know, God tell us he don't want us to lie. He don't want us to steal. He don't want us to kill. He don't want us to thief. He don't want us to gamble. All these things where we used to do before. He don't want us to do them no more. One day, you may realize what you're doing wrong. And you may change your life from that. You know, from that lifestyle, you will change and you will give your life to the Lord. And then you will, Lord will help you to walk in obedience to his word. So listen, my friends here tonight. So when you be obedient to God's word, he will take you out of situations that you would never think that you could come out from. You know, when you pray and you call upon the word of God, he will heal you. Miracles will take place in your life, in your families. You know, just be obedient. Just make a step forward of being obedient. You know, follow the commandments of God. Follow what God say. You know, ask God what you require of me. You know, tell me I want to know. I want to live for you. I want to walk in obedience to you. So being obedient to God where is so amazing. You know, when I do in this lesson and I study deeper and I see how great and how wonderful and what I really see the true meaning of obedience, you know, when I see, start seeing all these things in the Bible, listen God's word, act accordingly, then you will 
check yourself, you know, submit, surrender all to him, trust in him, have faith, have love, be kind to one another, fellowship, you know, you could, if you, we don't have the opportunity to fellowship in church, we fellowship with ourselves home, you know, integrity, instructions, faithful, right? So when we follow these instructions that the Bible have and we be faithful, all these things are being faithful to God, you know? We are being faithful. This is what he wants. This is what he requires of us. So in all these little categories here, it come under being obedient to God's will. And I was so amazed because um, sometimes you wouldn't think of all those things, you know, you would do a good today, and then you would say, well, I do something good today, right? But you wouldn't realize this is how you have to continue living your life. You have to put your life in order, and you have to set an example. So my message to you tonight is to try to be obedient to, walk, to God, walk in the words of God that he wants us to be. You know, pray about it, and the Lord will open our way. You know, this is what we have to do in our last days. We have to just pray and ask the Lord to help us, to give us courage, to give us strength, because our only hope is in Jesus. There is no other hope. Even with what is going on in this world right now, we have no other hope. We don't know what tomorrow brings. Only Jesus knows, right? So we need to hold on and and trust him and be obedient. And I, I assure you, when you walk in obedience with the Lord, you will see results. You will see he lift you higher. You will see you would pray more. You will read your Bible. You would be so different. You will be so peaceful. It will have so much love, right? Just try to walk in obedience with the word of God. You know, and all these things I have here in this lesson, I just go through it. You know, we go through it on a daily basis, right? Sometimes we feel to give up. We feel we have no patience, you know. We feel down. But then the good thing, we have Jesus, our only hope. So we call upon him and we ask him. And then sometimes you pray and you feel better. You naturally feel better in your spirit, you know. That the Lord, the Lord touch you, you know. So this is my exaltation here tonight about obedience, you know, talking and walking in obedience with God's word. And now I want to pray for a special prayer. I want to pray. Okay. Father, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, I give you all the praise, I give you all the honor, I give you all the glory, Lord Jesus, and I glorify your name, Father, Lord, for you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of Lord Jesus, and there is none like you, Father. And I worship and magnify your name here tonight, dear God. And as I come before your holy throne, Father Lord, I pray and I ask you, Father Lord, that you will take control in this world, dear Lord. I pray that you will step in, Father Lord, and that you will heal your people, dear God. You will touch each and every person, Lord. Jesus, and I pray as a worldwide prayer, Lord, here tonight, dear God, that you will touch the hospitals, Lord. You will touch your six one, Lord Jesus. I also pray a special prayer here tonight, Lord, for all these people that are sick with the COVID-19, Lord, and all the variants, Lord Jesus, Lord. And as we have our fast and pray for this week, dear God, as for 21 days, Father Lord, and I pray and I hold on with your faith, dear God, that you will heal and you will touch lives, Lord, and you will bring salvation in homes and family, dear God. And I pray, Lord, and I ask you, dear God, that you will touch your people, Lord, from the biggest to the smallest, dear God. Father, and I pray, Lord, that you will have your own sweet way, Lord Jesus, Lord. I pray for salvation throughout this world, dear God, because your time is near, Father Lord. 
Lord, and I pray and I ask you, Jesus, that you will take control and you will you will help some of them to understand, Lord, that your coming is soon there, God. Your second coming, Lord, that they will give their life fully to you, Lord, and they will change, Lord. That they will humble their self, Lord, and change from their wicked ways there, God, and they will turn to you, Father, Lord. Jesus, and I pray and I ask you, Lord, to touch this world, Lord Jesus. Even a special prayer for Trinidad and Tobago, Lord, and for our health system there, Father, Lord. And I pray, Jesus, that you will touch your people their God in a mighty way Lord bring healing to their body Lord from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet Father Lord take away their pain their God Jesus and I pray that you will touch lives right now Lord in every hospital throughout this world their God you will touch them because you know them by name and nature their God and I pray Lord that you will let your holy anointing flow through their body, their God, and that you will heal them, their God, and you will take away their pain, Father, Lord Jesus, Lord. You alone know what they are going through on them, Lord. We don't know, but you know, Lord, and you make them, Father, Lord. Jesus, and I pray and I ask you here tonight, their God, that you will save them, Father, Lord, even whatever to happen, their God, that they will get saved. They will call upon you, Lord Jesus, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will hear your word, Father, Lord, and that they will call upon the name of Jesus, the King of King and the Lord of Lord, Lord, because there is none like you and there is only you all by yourself there, God. And Father, tonight I pray and I ask you, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for all what you have doing, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch them in a mighty way. And I pray for the doctors there, God, that you will touch them, Lord, and you will give them wisdom and knowledge, Lord. I even pray that they will get a, a cure for this virus there, God. That the people lives will save for each and every variant, Lord, and even what is to come there, God. Father, I even pray, Lord Jesus, for what is to come that we don't even know, but you know there, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you will take control there, God. I pray that you will touch your people in a mighty way there, God, that you will heal them there, God, Father. You know their pain, you know their sorrow, Lord. You know what they are going through, Lord Jesus, Lord. And as I cry out to you and I ask you, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will take control there, God, because there is no other like you, Lord, Father jesus and i pray and i ask you here tonight dear god for the families that losing loved ones dear god i pray that you will bring courage to them dear god that you will help them you will give them strength their father lord you will give them peace in their mind dear god you will help them that they wouldn't get this courage and turn away from you father lord you will stand with them in every moment their father lord and i pray and i ask you here tonight dear god be with them father lord touch them lord mold them and make them their God. Help them their God, Jesus, that they won't turn away from you. They won't get discouraged, their God. Give them that strength and help them to keep that faith in you, Lord, Father. Jesus, and I pray and I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will bring comfort in their homes and comfort in their families, Lord. And I even pray, Lord, all the people that sick in the hospital, their God, that you will provide, Lord, Father, for their family, Lord, that they will have to give them Provide for them, their God, that they will have the money to buy the medication, their God. I pray there is so much people that sick their God, Father, Lord, and they don't have the money to, to get the treatment, Lord. They don't have the money to buy the medication, their God. And I pray at this time, their God, that you will touch them and you will visit their homes, their God. And you will touch them, their God, and you will... You will pour out your anointing on them, Lord, and you will bless them, Father, Lord. And you will bring healing in the body. And when they are healed, they will know who healed them, their God. They will know the true and living God, Jesus, and they will turn their life to you, Lord. I pray for that miracle right now, Lord, throughout this world, Lord. Not Trinidad alone, God, but throughout this whole entire world, their God, because our world is facing this crisis at this time, their God. Jesus, and I pray and I ask you, Father, Lord, that you will touch them, their God, and you will touch your people, Father God, in a special way, their God. And I even pray, Lord, a special prayer, Lord, that for the hospital, for the doctors, Lord, for the nurses, that you will keep them safe, their God, so they won't get discouraged, their God, and leave their patients, Father, Lord. I pray and I ask you, Lord, in your mighty name, that you will keep them safe, Father, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will 
cover them with your blood, dear God. You will cover them with your blood, Jesus, and you will save them, Father Lord. I pray mostly, dear God, for salvation throughout this world at this time, dear God. Because your coming, Lord, is near, Lord. Your rapture will soon be here, Lord Jesus, Lord. And I pray for all throughout the world, dear God, that you will touch them, Lord, and you will save them, Father Lord. I pray, Lord, they will come to know you as Lord and Savior, Jesus. And Jesus, even as this pandemic is here, dear God, I pray that they will see what's going on in this world today and they will turn their life, Jesus, to you, Lord. Because there is none, no other than you, Lord. It's only you, Jesus. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Lord Jesus. And we worship your mighty name, Father, Lord. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you will heal your people, Lord from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south, dear God. We don't know them, Lord, but you know them, Jesus. You make them, Lord, Father, you know, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch them, dear God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet from the very biggest person to the very littlest child, dear God. I pray that you will touch them and you will bring healing, dear God. Your healing virtue will flow through their body, dear God. And they will get up, Lord, and they will praise you and they will worship you, dear God. Father, and I pray and I ask this in your name, dear God. And I even pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you will keep us, Lord, Safe, dear God, our members in our church, all through Trinidad and Tobago, all through the world, Lord. I pray for the churches right now, dear God. Some that are closed, some that are open, dear God. I pray, Lord, that you will give them knowledge and wisdom, dear God. I pray that you will speak to them, Lord, that you, you will talk to them and speak to them, that they will know what is best to do, dear God. I pray, Lord, that Jesus, that who is sick, that you will bring healing to them. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will... Touch your people, Lord, in a mighty way, dear God, tonight, dear God. Jesus, and I pray for homes, dear God, in a special way, Lord, that they lost their loved ones, Lord, and struggling. Because it is so hard when the whole family have COVID and someone has died. And no one can go, no one can support them, right? They have to grieve all by themselves. It is very hurting. It is a very hurtful situation in life today this world has changed and people not open their eyes and seeing what is going on they are not changed in their life they don't want to hear the word of god but i pray tonight lord that they will open their eyes and they will turn their life to, unto you jesus only you lord that they will make that sacrifice their god and they will give their life to jesus lord and i pray and i humbly ask you their god i pray for each home here tonight their god i pray that you will keep each and every person throughout this world safe their god and they're going in and they're coming out their god father lord and i pray lord that you will keep them safe in their workplace lord wherever they go lord you will keep them safe and you will be with them, Father, Heavenly Father, Lord. Jesus, and as I come and I ask you here tonight, dear God, I thank you, Lord, for touching lives, dear God. I thank you for touching your people, dear God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will take this sickness, Lord, and send it back to the pit of hell, dear God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will, you will touch your people. You will save them in a mighty way, dear God. I pray, Lord, for them to hear your word and that when they hear your word, dear God, they will turn their life around, Lord. That they will give their life to Jesus, that they will give their life and they will praise and worship you, Lord, and glorify your name, dear God, because you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And this is what we are here to do, Lord, to tell others about Jesus, dear God, and save souls for your kingdom, dear God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bring this pandemic to an end there God this virus is to an end there God so we could go out to the streets and byways there God and we could preach the word of the Lord that we could go and assemble there God and we could call upon your name there God and we could do your duty Jesus I know we are still trying to do your duty online there God but sometimes it isn't enough there God we want to go out there Lord and we want to meet and greet your people there God and give them a track Lord and tell them about about the great and mighty God we serve there God and what you can do and what you what you 
is a capable of doing their God. And Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that it will come back to normal, their God, and that we will have the crusade all over, their God, and we will shout and praise you, and we will worship your mighty name, Father Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Jesus, Lord, because it belongs to you, their God, for you deserve all, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Jesus, you deserve the highest praise, dear God. As we call upon the name of the Lord tonight, dear God. Father, as we fast and pray and call upon your name, dear God. Jesus, we praise you, we glorify you, Lord. We lift up your name, Father. Jesus, we need you more than ever. And I pray that you will come and you will save our families. You will touch lives there, God. Jesus, and I pray that you will take control, Lord. I pray that you will direct our coming in and our going out there, God. I pray that you will direct our paths there, God, Father. Jesus, I pray that you will teach us and show us your way there, God, and not our way ourselves there, God. Jesus, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless us in all ways there, God, and you will help us to be obedient to your word there, God. Jesus, and I pray, Lord Jesus, as I cry out and I call upon you here tonight, Father Lord, that you will touch your people and touch their lives there, God. Jesus, I pray, Lord, your time is near, Lord, your time is coming there, God. There is not much time there, God. I I pray that it won't be too late there, God, and they will turn their life from their wicked ways and call upon you, Father Lord, that they will be saved there, Father Lord. Jesus, and I praise you and I worship your mighty name there, God. And as we fast and pray for our 21 days there, God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will hear our prayer, Lord Jesus, Lord, and you will take heed, Lord. Jesus, and I know the Lord and Savior I serve there, God. He is mighty and he is great and he do miracles, he do wonders, Lord. And I pray and I ask you, Father Lord, that you will take control here tonight, dear God. You will take control in every situation, dear God. Jesus, we don't know everyone's situation, but you know, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will visit each and every home throughout this world, dear God. And you will help them, Lord, and you will show them, dear God. Show them where is right and wrong. Show them, show them you, Lord. Do miracles and wonders, Lord. Let them see you, Lord. Let them seek your face there, God. Show them your way, Lord Jesus, because your way is the only way, Lord. Your way is the only truth there, Father, Lord. And there is no other way but the way of Jesus. Jesus, and I call upon you here tonight, there, God. Father, I lift up your name above all name, there, God, for your name is worthy to be praised, Lord. And I glorify you, Jesus, Lord. And I I praise and I worship you and I magnify your name here tonight, dear God. As I call upon your name, dear God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch your people, dear God. Touch their homes, touch their family, Lord. Keep them safe, dear God, Father Lord. Bring healing in their body, Father Lord. Take away their pains, dear God. Jesus, you know what they are going through, Lord. We don't know, but you know, dear God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you will touch them. I pray, Lord, that they will be saved, Lord, and they will be set free, Lord, from bondage, dear God. Jesus, and I give you thanks, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory, Jesus, here tonight, dear God, because you're worthy to be praised, dear God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, for peace and unity, dear God. And I even pray, Lord, for the government at this time, dear God, that they will... They will act, Lord, accordingly, Lord, that they will have unity and love, Lord, with one another, their God, and they won't be bickering, their God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch them, Lord, that they will make decisions that is wise, their God. Father, and I pray for them right now, Lord, that they that you will touch them, their God. Touch all of them in the parliament, their God. I pray, Lord, that they will make decision that is wise, their God. They will open their eyes, their God. And I even pray that they will turn their life to you, their God. So we will have a better government, their God, Father, Lord. As we come before you, Lord, and we humbly ask in your name, Jesus, Lord. I pray and I ask you, Father, Lord, that Thank you, Lord, for touching your people. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer here tonight, dear God. Jesus, because you are worthy, worthy to be praised, Lord. I just want to worship you and glorify your name, dear God. I just want to lift up all the praise, all the hallelujah to you, dear Father, Lord. Because you are worthy to be praised, dear God, and you are... 
You are God all by yourself there, Lord. There is none other than you, Lord. And we worship you and we thank you, Father, Lord. And we glorify you, Lord. We lift up your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy to the Lamb. Worthy to you, Jesus, for you alone is worthy. For you alone is greatly and greatly to be praised, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there is none like you, dear God. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross, dear God. I thank you, Lord, for dying on that cross and sacrificing yourself, dear Lord, for us. Thank you for sharing your blood, dear God, for us, Lord. We don't have to go and kill a cow and a dog and a donkey, Lord. We just have to call upon the name of the Lord and ask for forgiveness, dear God. God, and change from our wicked lives there God and we are saved I just thank you Lord and I glorify your name Lord Jesus we thank you we thank you for what you have done on that cross for us there God we just thank you Lord for you alone is worthy there God and you are so grateful there God Father Lord tonight Jesus and you are great Lord Father we just lift up all the thanks all the honor and all the glory to you there God and Father as we come before you Lord Jesus we ask you Lord that you will touch your people there God that was my prayer for tonight there God that you will touch your people there are many homes that is hurting right now Lord they are crying out to you Father Lord Jesus Lord I pray that you will visit them there God and you will touch them in a mighty way Father Lord I pray Lord that you will save them that you will heal them there God you will bring healing in their body there God you will take away that pain there God you will give them encouragement there God you will send a word for them there God that they will hear Lord and they will turn from their wicked ways there God and they will bring they will serve you there God they will testify about what had done there God and I pray Lord Lord, and I ask you, Jesus, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. I thank you for already answering our prayer, Lord. I thank you for visiting those homes, there, God. I thank you for visiting those hospitals, there, God, and each and every sick throughout this world, there, God. I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything what you have done. I thank you for keeping us safe there, God. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your grace upon our life there, God. I thank you for providing for us there, God. I thank you for every single thing. I thank you for waking us up in the morning, Lord. I thank you for keeping our children safe there, God. I thank you for keeping everyone safe in the workplace, on the roads, on the vehicles there, God. I pray that you will surround each and every home there, God, with your love there, God. Let your holy and angel encamp, oh Lord, and keep us safe there, God, in our going out and in our coming in. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For you are mighty, for you are great, Lord. For we alone know, Lord, what we have in you, Jesus. For you are great, Lord. For you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And we glorify your name, Jesus, like never before. We lift up your name above all, Lord. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life, dear God. Thank you for having us here, dear God. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for saving us, dear God. Thank you for helping us to know who you are, Lord, the true and one King, dear God. Jesus, I just thank you and I thank you and I worship your mighty name, Lord. And I glorify your name, dear God, for you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And as I come before you and I thank you, Jesus, Jesus, in holiness and in righteousness, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Amen. So I dedicate in the song tonight on behalf of my lesson here.
trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Oh, trust and obey. No other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet side in the way what he says we will do where he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus to trust and obey oh trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and I'm going to pray for the prayer request box here. So all those who have their prayer request inside this box and even who have their one at home, even who have their, their prayer in their mind. Okay. So I pray, I'm going to pray for this box right now. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, as I lift up this prayer request box here, Lord, before you there, God, I pray and I ask you, Jesus, Lord, that you will, you will meet everyone need there, God, whatever it have inside here there, God, and at home there, God, in their homes there, God, even in their minds, in their heart there, God, whatever it may be there, God, a home, a car, a financial breakthrough, salvation, um, whatever it may be, Lord, sickness, healings, you know, the sick, they need healing in their body there, God. You know, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will, that you will meet every need there, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch them in a special and a mighty way there, God. And that you will work out everything for your honor and for your glory there, God. I pray that you will open a way there, God. And who are pleading for our work there, God, or whatever the case may be there, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you will... You will meet their need there, God, Father, Lord. And I pray, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, that you will touch this prayer request box there, God. And you will even touch the person there, God. You will touch the homes, Lord, that have their prayer request, Lord. And you will touch their minds and heart, Lord, Father, who have theirs in their mind there, God. Or who didn't be able to write their own there, God, and just think about what they wanted, Father, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch them there, God, and you will... You will meet that need, Father, that God, according to them, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless them, that you will guide them, and you will protect them, their Father, God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, their God, that they will have a testimony, Lord Jesus, that you answer their prayer, and they will come, and they will testify to you, their God, for the great and mighty things you have done, and for all your miracles and wonder, their God. Jesus, and I pray, and I ask you, their Father, Lord, 
And I thank you, Lord, for doing it. And I thank you in your holy and mighty name, dear God. Amen. And I also pray tonight, dear God, at the closing off of this service, dear God, I thank you, Father, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given to me right here, Lord Jesus, to come and share the word, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will, everything that was said and done here tonight, dear God, I pray, Lord, that you will touch someone's hearts will be touched, dear God, and they will learn something. A soul will save, Lord, for your kingdom, dear God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will take us home safe, dear God. And I pray, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, and thank you for having your mercy upon us, dear God. And I pray and I glorify your name, dear God. Father, I praise and I worship you. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, Lord, in your mighty name, dear God. Amen.